thousand years ago, a fierce warrior known as the Scorpion King led a great army on a campaign to unite the known world. Though they fought well, the Scorpion King and his army were defeated by the Sumerians and driven deep into Amshir, the sacred desert. On death's door, the Scorpion King made a pact with the desert god Anubis. If Anubis would let him live to conquer his enemies, he would surrender to Anubis, his immortal soul. The next year, the Scorpion King stormed northward with the army of Anubis. No power on earth could stop the supernatural warriors, and the Sumerians were crushed before them. But the Scorpion King's moment of victory was also his last. As the army of Anubis was returned once again to oblivion, the soul of the Scorpion King was banished to the underworld. Though thousands of years have passed since then, history has a way of repeating itself. According to the calendar of the ancients, the year of the Scorpion is once again upon us. Though my old friends Rick and Evie, and now their son Alex, think only to spend their days in pursuit of knowledge and treasure, they will soon find themselves on the path of danger once more. Stumbling through the ruins of the ancient past, they uncover an accursed treasure that leads them to their destined place in the ultimate battle between good and evil. For the mummy returns. It's so dark in here, Rick. And yet, it's all so familiar. Uh, tell me, Sweet Pea, if this ancient temple has been sealed off from the world for a thousand years or so, why is there a burning torch right over there? Take your pick, darling. Could be grave robbers, treasure seekers, or just the eternal flame of the damned. Now you're talking! I pick grave robbers. Can we go now? I can hardly make out a single hieroglyph. And yet... Something tells me I've seen this all before, as if in a dream. What, sand, scarabs, scorpions? Darling, throw in an evil mummy or two, and you're basically describing our honeymoon. Scorpions? Where? Be careful, Alex. Oh, Mom, I'm always careful. Whoa! Alex, you all right? I think so, but... I fell down some kind of steep chute and I can't get back up it. Sorry I broke the temple, Mum. Oh, Alex, can you tell me where you are? Can you see anything? Uh, not much. I'm in a huge room filled with giant statues, but I can't see much else. It's really dark in here. Don't worry, Alex. We'll be right there. We've got to find another way down there. Come on, let's go.
run really fast and hope the arrows don't kill you. What kind of plan is that? Hey, it's a plan. You got any better ideas? You've got to shield yourself somehow. Find something you can use to block the arrows.
unbelievable. The chamber of the Scorpion King. Whew, I hate to think what's in there. Mom, Dad, I'm in here. Is that you? You've got to get me out of here. Alex, hang on. We'll hurry. It won't budge. All right, let's try it your way. Can you read the instructions on this thing? There's something here about four keys. No, no, not keys exactly. Four immense rubies that act like keys. We've got to place them into this cartouche, and the Scorpion King will be appeased and let us enter. There. That doesn't sound so bad, Alex. We'll just go take a look around for those rubies and come directly back for you. All right. Let's do it.
need some sort of ancient crypt. Look, this chamber is the final resting place of a most beloved servant of the Scorpion King himself. Apparently he's some sort of guardian. Guardian of the keys, actually. And the rest is just a lot of the usual gibberish about how all who enter here will die a thousand deaths and... Gibberish? Hmm, maybe we should skip this room. Come on, we've got to find Alex. What the? Alex, you all right? Mom, Dad, I thought you'd never make it. Darling, don't worry. We're all together now. We'll be safe. Uh, don't make any promises you can't keep, sweetie. Look. What's this? The carvings suggest a sacred power, greater than can be known or imagined. That's great, honey. Honey! Uh, Mum? Oh my god! It's the mythical bracelet of the Scorpion King! The Benbridge scholar said it couldn't really exist, and yet here it is! That's what they said about this guy, and yet here he is too! Evie, run!
Let's go home now, Rick. Really. I want to go home. You sure? This place has got it all. Sam, scorpions, spiders. I'd hate to just walk away from all this. Rick, don't make me beg. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. Arriving back in Britain after their narrow escape from the temple ruins, Rick, Evie, Jonathan and Alex are surprised by Mila and a group of Imhotep's red turbans. Alex is the first to realize that they're after the bracelet box his family brought back from the temple, hoping to ruin their plot. Alex puts on the bracelet found inside the box and replaces it with a heavy vase. Mila and the red turbans kidnap Evie and steal the useless box. Thinking they have finally found the bracelet, Yet all is not lost. Alex recognizes that one of the intruders is actually the curator of the British Museum. Hot on the trail, the group sets off to make their way to the famed museum. Arriving there, Alex and Jonathan are left in the car, while Rick and Ardith sneak inside the museum to get Evie back, and with any luck, stop Mila and the red turbans along the way. Okay, here's the plan. We're gonna rip apart every inch of this place until we find my wife. That is your plan? You got a better one? Where I come from, we would just ask him. Get out of here! Get out while you still can! It's chaos! The basement's full of dark creatures, strange fellas in red turbans, and they're all armed, every one of them! They're up to some kind of strange ceremony, and all I know is I'll be damned if all the museum's displays are coming to life. I know it sounds daft, but it's like the whole place is under some kind of spell or something. How do we get to the basement? Well, you'd have to ask Roger about that, wouldn't you? Seeing as he's the only one with the key to the basement level. Where is this Roger? Well, you'd have to ask Charlie about that, the old mule. Seeing as he's the only one with the key to the second floor. Who said anything about the second floor? We're trying to get to the basement. Don't get snippy with me. I'm under a considerable deal of stress at the moment. Roger's up there on two. That's where he works. So, where's Charlie? Oh, he's hiding down here somewhere, scared witless. That old mother hen. You won't be seeing old Charlie till you've cleared every threat of danger from this floor. Destroy everything, make it good and safe down here. Then the old goat will come creeping out and act like some kind of hero or something. Enough said. Good luck then. My shift's over. I'm getting out while I still can. Did you get any of that? Something about a mule, a goat, and a hen. Like an ancient proverb. We gotta find the guards and get upstairs to get access to the basement. And then, we just gotta stick to the original plan. Rip this place apart while we look for my wife. You are wise, Rick O'Connell.
In the name of my dark lord Imhotep, I will crush you like a desert mouse. Trouble. Something very bad is happening here tonight, O'Connell. I fear the worst. Must be Charlie. Depends on who's asking. I am Charlie. I'm asking you to get your donkey's butt upstairs and unlock the floor so I can get the guy up there to let me into the basement, where the odds are growing by the minute that an undead mummy is harassing my wife. Not a chance! No way! I'm not coming out of here until there's no more spooks on this whole floor! You hear me? You won't get any help from me until this whole floor looks sleepier than a Sunday school. All right! Quit whining. I'll see what I can do. And then you're walking me upstairs, Charlie. Spooks or not. Oh! <laughs> 
You've done saved me life! Open the door. But you've done saved me life! Open the door. Blimey, I can't believe you two. We haven't got time for this, old boy. Now where exactly on the second floor is Roger? I can't be entirely sure. Hiding, that's for certain. But where? I don't know. Well, your safest bet is if you clean up that floor the same way you did here, Roger will likely pop up. Just make sure it's safe. You guards are funny little men. What do they pay you for? I'm not fighting villainous creatures, that's for certain. I'm going home. O'Connell, your wisdom shines again. All we've been doing is ripping this place apart. And we'll do it some more. Let's clean up the second floor and look for that guard. He'll be hiding, so we should check anything suspicious. Listen, do you hear that? The chanting. Those are Imhotep's priests. They must have Evie downstairs, just as we suspected. Ah, we really need to get that basement key. Roger, that you? Go away! Listen to me, I need to get into the basement. It's very important, Roger. I think my wife is in danger. I'm not coming out of here until they've gone. Every last one of them. The creatures! They're horrible! <sighs> All right, we're on it. Stay here. We'll be back for you. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. <sighs>
I'm obliged. It was getting a bit dicey around here, as you could see. Just give me the key to the basement. Right, here you go then. You're on your own. No way I'm going down there. Did I mention I hate mummies? I don't think he likes you much either. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up! Thank you, my servants. Your master has awoken. We are too late, O'Connell. The creature has risen. You! This time I want him dead! Shut up, Daya! Setna! We have no choice but to destroy them, or we will never get out of here alive! an immortal. You are no match for my powers. Why do you challenge my greatness? Mom! Dad! Don't let him take me! <laughs> no! Alex! Getting to the museum basement in the nick of time, Rick and Ardeth are able to save Evie. However, amidst the fray, Imhotep and Mila discover that Alex is carrying the bracelet after all. Brushing Jonathan aside, Mila and her henchmen kidnap Alex. When Ardeth tells a worried Rick and Evie that the bracelet is going to lead Alex, along with Imhotep and his minions, to the Golden Pyramid of the Scorpion King, they set off after him, headed for Cairo. We'll never find him here. This is futile. I need to stop and catch my breath. We have many allies here, O'Connell. Do not despair. 
Cairo has long been a stronghold for the Magi. My men have established a safe house in the hotel. I will take Evie there to get some rest. She will be safe there. I'll keep looking for Alex. You must search the entire town. He could be anywhere. You shouldn't have too much difficulty getting around town. But when you get to the docks, you will have to bribe your way past the guards. They are men of little honor. The second you find out anything about Alex, or if you see Imhotep or his men, come find us back at the hotel. Yes. Do not try to rescue Alex without me. This is my town, and you will need my help this time. But hurry, Rick. Night is falling, and Alex will be scared. And I'll be scared for him. Sorry, this area is restricted. No public access. That's right. I almost forgot. You are men of little honor. What can I offer these guys? Huh! <laughs> 
let you through for that little. Ha! I'm not running a charity. I never saw you. You were never here. Now go on. Hurry on your way. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've seen Alex. He's being held at the train station. We've got to go after him before it's too late. Evie, stay here. You will be safe with the Magi. No harm will come to you on their watch. O'Connell, night has fallen. The streets of Cairo would not be safe for her tonight. We must exercise extreme caution. The creature is in our midst. People, look at their faces. Imhotep has made zombies of them.
pyramid. We're going to the Golden Pyramid at Omshir. Dad, I'm scared. You got to hurry. I don't have much time. <laughs> I'll kill him all over again before I let anything happen to you. Evie sits weeping. With Alex in plain sight, Imhotep and Mila still manage to get away. But Rick has become even more determined to get his son back. Knowing that the mummy is headed for the Golden Pyramid, Rick convinces his longtime friend, Izzy, to pilot the group to the hidden oasis in his trusty dirigible. Yet, as our heroes near the horizon of their destination, Imhotep discovers them and sends a cursed wall of water crashing towards them to bring them down. Eventually caught by the rising flood, the dirigible plummets down into the miraculous jungle, a jungle that exists in the desert, part of the hidden sacred oasis surrounding the mythical Golden Pyramid. Is everyone all right? We don't have time to stop and lick our wounds. Alex is out there, and we've got to find him before it's too late. She's right. We have got to keep moving. This is Arm Shear. The army of Anubis will spring from this oasis. I must go warn the Magi. Stay with me, my friend. Just until we find Alex. I can't do it without you. All right, we move forward, but split up. Look, we know Imhotep is headed for the Golden Pyramid with the boy. He's right. We find the way to the Golden Pyramid. We find Alex. But be careful. The jungle hides many dangers. What the? Be careful. I'm serious. This is not your same old average booby-trapped ancient temple. Those were sharp logs. Evie, maybe you and Jonathan should stay behind until I find a safer way. Yes, thanks. What an excellent plan, Rick. Have a nice look around the jungle, and when you've found the easiest route between here and there... Jonathan, don't be such a wimp. We have no time for this, O'Connell. If we are to find your son, we must hurry. Don't mind us. We can find our own way through the jungle. Come along, Jonathan. We'll meet up with them at the Golden Pyramid. Ugh, I liked his plan better.
Alex! Dad! Dad! Listen to me! The bracelet! It's going to kill me! I've got to get inside the Golden Pyramid by sunrise! Dad! That's right now! You've got to get me inside the pyramid before the sun touches it! You okay, Alex? Yeah, thanks, Dad. <sighs> you know, it's hard being a dad. Ah! Mom! Evie, no! Evie has been slain by Mila, and everyone is at a loss. Time seems to be at a standstill as the mourning few surround Evie in shock. Our hero, Rick, is driven all the more, driven by revenge, driven by rage. 
Knowing that Imhotep intends to raise the Scorpion King and steal his mythical army, our hero follows Imhotep through the Golden Pyramid down to the Netherworld. He will send the mummy back to the spirit world or die trying. Watch over Alex for me, Jonathan. It's time to end this game. Imhotep! I'm coming for you, old friend! It's time I sent you back to hell! Again! That is the door to the netherworld. No mortal can cross over. Not until you capture the four amulets held by the Anubis commanders. But the living do not often survive the Anubis. <laughs> I will fight you in the netherworld, if you live long enough. Until then, I will laugh at the memory of your beloved. <laughs> You're gonna regret that.
Strong, Rick O'Connell. Good. There will be less shame in my victory. More honor in your death. Didn't your mother ever tell you not to count your chickens before they're hatched? It's bad manners! Hello, and holy mackerel! Though winning his fight with Imhotep, Rick has not reached the mummy in time to keep him from summoning the Scorpion King. With the mummy lying in tatters before him, Rick is left to peer into the dismal abyss of the Scorpion King's lair, knowing that if he is to save the world, he must face what lies beyond. The Scorpion King waits.
The scepter of Osiris! Oh, steady, old boy.
used the Book of the Dead. He stole it from Mila and brought me back to life. Using perfect ancient Egyptian, I might add, he'll make an excellent Benbridge scholar one day. I thought... Shh. Can we go home now? Amidst the chaos, Alex grabbed the Book of the Dead from Anaxunamun and used it to resuscitate Evie. Then, with Imhotep defeated, the Scorpion King destroyed, and our heroes united. The hidden oasis destroys itself, drawing the vast jungle into a single vortex created by the pyramid. It doesn't look good for Rick and his family as they struggle to the top of the pyramid, until Izzy and his battered dirigible emerge from the horizon. As my valiant friends make their escape, and sail safely away from the destroyed oasis of Arm Shear. The world is as it should be. Evil has once more been conquered. Good has again prevailed. And I will continue to watch over the sands of Egypt, always ready for the day when it may return. Six thousand years ago, a fierce warrior known as the Scorpion King led a great army on a campaign to unite the known world. Though they fought well, the Scorpion King and his army were defeated by the Sumerians and driven deep into Arm Shear, the sacred desert. On death's door, the Scorpion King made a pact with the desert god, Anubis. If Anubis would let him live to conquer his enemies, he would surrender to Anubis, his immortal soul. The next year, the Scorpion King stormed northward with the army of Anubis. No power on earth could stop the supernatural warriors, and the Sumerians were crushed before them. But the Scorpion King's moment of victory was also his last. As the army of Anubis was returned once again to oblivion, the soul of the Scorpion King was banished to the underworld. Ages have passed from that year to this, the year of the Scorpion. In this one year of the millennia, the army of Anubis can return to ravage the earth like a lethal plague, if the evil sorcerer Imhotep has his way. Having uncovered the corpse of the mummy in the desert sands, a dark order now works to revive the only being mighty enough to overthrow the Scorpion King, claim the army of Anubis, and go on to rule the world in darkness. May the gods help us. The mummy returns. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Thank you, my servants. Your master has awoken. Ah, oh, you carry a heavy curse with you, my lord. The Pharaoh and the ancient gods are not pleased. They have many powers that can stand in our way and keep us from our quest. The gods of the Nile must be appeased. We have brought these sacred statues here so that you can try to make atonement to the ancient gods. Four offering stones have been hidden throughout the museum. Return the stones to the statues. 
If your offering is accepted, the gods will bless and make a gift to you in return. <sighs> your magic is growing stronger with every passing moment, Lord Imhotep. But the strength of your powers drains your own life force, my lord. The curator tells me there must be at least three canopic jars within this very museum. I fear you will not be able to survive long without retrieving them. The jars will help you increase in health, which will allow you to expand your growing powers and cast more powerful spells. But better yet, some of the jars have been known to contain spells. You cannot regenerate your mortal body without the souls of the living, my lord. If you suck the souls of the living, you will be able to enhance your powers and your strength. Here, yeah. try a guard or two. I'm sure they're delicious. You can suck the life force from human beings to restore your own strength and power. If you beat a human into submission, they will become stunned and powerless. Only then will you be able to steal their life force. Let me show you the ancient spell.
It is the son of the American Rick O'Connell. And the wife, Evie, she is often at the museum. But I believe you have already met these Americans, have you not, my lord? Imhotep, you will die at my hands now, creature. As you should have perished at the hands of my Magi forefathers thousands of years ago. For the Pharaoh! <laughs> to your death. Hurry, my lord. You will never defeat the Magi unless you resurrect your own devoted soldiers. Do it now! the bracelet. Come, Lord, the quest is upon us. Though Rick is able to save Evie, Ardeth cannot hold back Imhotep. Having appeased the gods, and thus lifting the curse that has plagued him since he betrayed the pharaoh, the mummy now moves freely toward his destiny. And with Alex in hand, Imhotep will now be able to locate the hidden oasis of Amshir, the resting place of the Scorpion King. On to Cairo, where Mila has arranged passage to Karnak, and a temple where Imhotep will soon be reunited with his eternal love, Anak Sunamun. I have the boy. We will go wait for the train to Karnak. It should come by nightfall. Careful. The parents, the Americans, they will be here, seeking the help of the Magi. I will stop them. By nightfall, the boy will be an orphan. By nightfall, Lord Imhotep. You must return to us at the station. You cannot miss the train to Karnak. We must continue our journey. I will be there. Go!
is it? The Americans are not here, but a canopic jar is. A canopic jar the Magi wanted very badly to keep from me. The curse of death. Night has fallen. The Americans will have to wait. I have to get back to the train. Stop the train! Batem <sighs> Sumata! Goodbye, Magi. <laughs> the train is about to leave the station, my lord. If you can just hold off the Magi a few moments longer. Time to die, Magi. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> 
are on our way to the Golden Pyramid. Oh, your powers will know no bounds, my lord. Not when we have defeated the Scorpion King. And soon I will restore your true soul, and my beloved Anux on the moon will return to me. Having reduced the city of Cairo to a den of decay, Imhotep leaves with Mila toward Karnak, still possessing Alex, despite Ardeth's attempt to recover him once more. Focusing his immediate attention on the task at hand, the mummy looks forward only to resuscitating his true love, Anaxunamun, and restoring her eternal spirit to Mila's body, for Mila is her reincarnated form. It won't be long before the two are together once more. The time has come for my beloved to return to me. The soul of Anux and a moon will be restored, and our love will have endured a thousand years' time. Everything we need is in the temple. Come, my love. Come, my love.
I will need this to resurrect Anuk Sunamun. Utim shu te font geb. Heke baya ra. Heke peru keru. Anuk Sunamun. Anuk Sunamun. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Having successfully restored Anak Sunamun, Imhotep now presses forward to the hidden oasis, a thick jungle amidst the barren desert, which is home to the mythical Golden Pyramid of the Scorpion King. While making his way toward the jungle, the mummy spots Rick and company overhead in a dirigible, and raises a monstrous wave of water from the river below to bring down and destroy the group. With the enchanted tsunami finally bringing the small aircraft down, Imhotep continues on towards the jungle. The Golden Pyramid beckons in the distance. It cannot be. The gods are mocking us. The boy's parents seem to be alive, and somewhere in this jungle. Thank heavens. Anak Sunamun, the Golden Pyramid is ahead of us. We must cross the jungle to get to it. Imhotep, you know the jungle hides many dangers. Creatures and warriors of every kind. I fear... You fear nothing. Fear nothing the gods of the Nile could send our way. Soon there will be nothing to fear in this world but us. Lord Imhotep and his army of Anubis warriors. The boy! I will find him, my lord. Do not fear. I will bring him to you at the Golden Pyramid.
This is not the end, creature. The Pharaoh shall be avenged.
Now, creature, you will die for the last time. <laughs> you will have to kill me first if you want to reach the Golden Pyramid. You do not have to give me a reason to kill you, Magi. I would not have it any other way. Shut up! <laughs> This is not the end of it, demon. The Magi will not allow your diseased soul to plague the world any longer. <laughs> I have killed the boy's mother, Evie. Is that what the Americans call her? Our Nefertiti? But the boy... The boy escaped me. Come. It does not matter now. We have the bracelet. The Scorpion King awaits us. Anaxunamun strikes Evie with a fatal blow and leaves her behind to follow her beloved master Imhotep into the Golden Pyramid. It will soon be time for Imhotep to claim his destiny. Only the Netherworld stands in his way, for within that spirit world, past the ancient guardians, he will find the gong that will raise the Scorpion King himself from his supernatural slumber. The inscriptions are clear, my lord. According to these signs, you must be purified before you can pass through this portal. Four canopic jars contain the elements of the purification ritual, but they are closely held by the guardians of the netherworld. So I destroy the guardians, and we perform the ritual. Destroy everything you find, and we will recover the jars.
Seal has made me human. My body is weak and pitiful. The Scorpion King would not face me as an immortal. <laughs> now I will destroy him even as a man and seal my destiny. Now, right now. Let me clarify one thing. I really, really, really hate mummies! <laughs> you are strong. I will enjoy taking your life. <laughs> then I'll see you in hell!
has beaten Rick, and mankind's hope of a peaceable future has been crushed along with him. The Scorpion King has been summoned, and the doors to the lair are open before him. Now, mortal, having been transformed by the seal, Imhotep will face this final obstacle with human hands. The Scorpion King awaits. Oh! 
The scepter of Osiris. So ends the reign of the Scorpion King. No! Himself, warrior prince of the nether world, has fallen at the hands of the evil sorcerer Imhotep, the mightiest of mummies. Now virtually immortal, he sets himself forth as Neo Pharaoh, ruler of the entire globe, commanding the army of Anubis, Anaxunamun at his side. He marches forward across the desert sands, laying waste to everything in front of him enslaving all life that he finds, and crushing all who will not bow before him. Truly, evil has won the battle, and evil has won the war. Not even my order of magi protectors can unseat him now. Imhotep rules the world in eternal darkness. <laughs> 